Okay, so we're live. Now, the title of the sermon today is The Rules for Christian Government. Now, what we see here is a lot of parts in the Bible, especially the new Bibles that are being changed, especially the new Bibles that are being changed about obeying your government. You're going to see a lot of rules about it. And people are going to try and push that to you. Obey, obey the government, obey. We're going to look into the Bible and show exactly what you are supposed to uh, do in this situation. Okay, so. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Now, what does this mean? If a law comes out and it's against God, should you obey it? very simple for us to answer now but people are going to try and blur the lines especially in the future there's going to be laws brought out that are going to change so let's see what the christian rules are for government let's go to the first slide okay daniel answered and said blessed be the name of the go of god forever and ever for wisdom and might are his not people's they're god's now he changes the times and the seasons. Remember we did last week how we calculated Jesus' exact birthday using the scripture? He changes the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings and giveth wisdom unto the wise. Okay? And knowledge to them that know understanding. So if a king's not right, God used to get rid of him. Bad things used to happen. Remember what happened to Saul? David? Solomon? That's what happens. It doesn't matter if God gives you wisdom. You have to use that wisdom. Sometimes we know the right thing to do because God's given us wisdom. But we don't do it. We don't have that wisdom to follow through. Let's go to the next one. For the kingdom, the country. Whatever country you're from. That kingdom is the Lord's and he is the governor among the nations. God's in charge, okay? Not men. And the Bible says something very interesting. Now we know that David was also a prophet. He says in the future, a seed shall serve him. Who? God. When you see this in the Bible, in capitals, it's the name of God. The King James Bible replaced the uh, YHWH with this, Lord, so that we don't overuse God's name. And it was a good idea that they did that. Okay? A seed shall serve him. He's talking about who? It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so one generation, one person's lifetime will change everything in the future. Okay, a seed is talking about Jesus, and they shall come and declare his righteousness to who? A people that shall be born. Now, if they're not born yet, it means they're not around yet, right? There is a people in the future coming. Now, was this 800 or more BC? It was the time of David, around that time. So, what do we see here? We see here, okay, in the future there'll be a Christian nation, okay, and it will come from the generation of one person. Let's go on to the next one. So, we go to the Old Testament and we see where it's going with this, okay. Can one of you look up when David's reign was, or how old it was? I would love to know so that I get it exactly perfect for the sermon. Okay. Every man shall give as he is able. So this is a Christian government. This is a godly government from the beginning. Okay. Have any of you heard of these rich tax havens? Yeah. <laughs> Where rich people don't give anything. As they're able to. What was the time of David, please? I want it perfect for the sermon. Well, according to the biblical literature, 
Shah, it said about 1000 to 962 BC. Okay, so it's about 1000 BC. Brilliant, thank you. Okay, so it wasn't 800, it was 1000. Okay, so every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of thy Lord. So is it from his hands? The blessing of the Lord thy God, which he has given me. So if someone's rich, if someone's successful, okay, it's from God, it's not from them. So they have a responsibility, you know, not to dodge tax, but to contribute to that country so that that country has more money for more policemen, more doctors, things like that. Okay, each man's supposed to give as he is able. This is the, the government rule from God. Judges and officers, today we call them police officers, yeah? Shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, wherever you live, which the Lord thy God gives thee. Okay, the officer takes you to the judge, right? That's how it works. Okay. Uh, throughout their tribes, all your people, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. Proper judgment. Okay. Not twisted judges, not evil judges. This is the Christian government that's supposed to be in place. So if it says to you obey the government, it means this one. <laughs> it doesn't mean whichever one man set up. Okay. An atheist, you know communist type republic or whatever it is they, they they want so let's go to the next one strict instructions for these people thou shall not rest judgment don't twist judgment have you ever heard of someone who gets out on the technicality yeah oh this guy we had to let him go because stop you shall not twist that judgment you shall not respect persons neither take a gift now who's seen that film a few good men <laughs> you've seen it in that part in that in that film you see that the guy's taken to court and he says if you take this guy to court you're going to get in big trouble you get in big trouble for accusing this guy why why you shall not respect persons why is there a government in place that respects persons? Why can't the mayor or the president be taken to court? The, 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 the strict Christian government is anyone can be taken to court. Anyone. Okay? Neither take a gift. Now, it doesn't say bribe. Gift. You're not allowed to receive a gift. If you're a policeman and someone's going... This company wants to make a donation to the policeman society of this, this and this. They're not supposed to accept it. Why? Because of your position. But more importantly than that, because God says so. For a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. Do you know how much this guy gives to charity? Who cares? He did this to that girl. The gift blinds it. It makes you, because if you're donating to someone, you'll see that person in a different light. Okay? So if you just imply, if you just put on people God's actual rules, you'll win. This is the perfect society. Okay? That which is altogether just shall that follow. So if a guy brings out a law that's unjust, should I follow it? No only what's just okay justice that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the lord thy god giveth thee let's go to the next one okay you know what we love this year there was no days off <laughs> there on, on that this country cyprus has more days off than any country in europe okay that's the truth of it whether we're lazy or whatever it is but this comes from the bible there's special festivals. It cheers people up. It makes you thankful. This is the day of this and this, or a bank holiday of this and that stuff. Whatever they call it, have a special day off during the year. Okay? Instead of, uh, so, so God's precarious. So when we have these days off, that's from the Bible as well. Okay? Make days off. You shall proclaim on the self that there shall be a holy convocation to you. Holy day. You shall do no servile work. 
people will look forward to this. It will build their morale. It will bring people up. This is, should be law, and it's law. We wonder today where we get police officers and judges. It's from the Bible. It worked, so we copied it. So this works as well. It shall be a statue forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. Also, it's very handy for us working out dates and times. So thank you, God, for doing that. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest. Neither shall thou gather any gleaning of the harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord your God. Now, corner means something different in Hebrew. A corner isn't uh, the side. It just means your side or the boundaries of. Yeah, it doesn't mean an exact corner like a square, like we think of a corner. It just means the boundaries of. Now, okay, otherwise if you had an oval field, you would not know how to do this. <laughs> okay, so, at the corners of your field, so that the poor people don't have to go all the way in, right at the corner, when they walk past your field, they can pick whatever they want. Now, is this a good idea? Fantastic idea. What should the government do? Plant loads of trees everywhere that people can eat from. That's a fantastic idea. I don't want a 50,000 uh, euro model of a whatever it is at Molos. I don't even know what that, those statues are down the road. They're statues of complete nothing. It's some guy in the government who paid his friend to get an extra money for this and that. I'm not dumb. Those things are not art. Okay. What I'm saying is, it's better spend the money on the people. In America, they will spend, and it's through corruption, this, okay? We will spend trillions to go to Mars, trillions. And to do it, they'll walk past these rows of homeless people. They only cost 2,000. Did you know to build a homeless place? It only, I looked it up. Water and everything is the problem. All you have to do is collect the water and electricity. 2,000, you get a house for 2,000 because of the modern way we've done it. So if we haven't fed them first, why are we spending 50 trillion to go to a place that they know? The scientists have now said, we know it's uninhabitable. We will never live there on Mars. We can't. Now, we need to put things into perspective because we needed a Christian government. A real Christian government would never have okayed stuff like this rubbish. Okay? They would have thought of this first. So, yes, the poor first. Okay? Let's go to the next one. Okay? Moreover, thou shalt provide out of the people able men. If there's a policeman that doesn't know the law, is he an able man? He's completely worthless. Okay? Thou shalt provide out of uh, the people able men, such as fear God, should they be Christians. This is the government that we should be <laughs> voting for. If, before I know that guy, before I'm going to appoint him to be a policeman, I want to know that he understands God's law first. That's what I want. I want a Christian policeman, because if he comes there and says, Thou shalt not steal... He doesn't care if it's his best friend from school. He'll put him in prison. These are the things, okay? Men of truth hating covetousness. They're not greedy. They're not out for money. And place such over them to be rulers of the... Now, did we obey this rule? Yes. Well, where, where are we? Limassol has a mayor who's in charge of... This department of this who's in charge of... This is... The, the, the rules for society worked because it was here first. There was complete anarchy before the Jews started putting all these rules in. Okay, from God. Okay, so uh, let's go to the next one. Fifties and tens and stuff like that. We also do armies like that and it works. Uh, in the Bible, he said he, God told him how to make his army as well. Put captains and stuff like that and it worked. Okay, let them judge the people at all seasons. Now... I've heard some very questionable people start to say ridiculous things to me. Oh, that's the Old Testament. And it doesn't matter. <laughs> I would love to meet these Christians who say they're Christians, 
and say that the Old Testament, oh, that's the Old Testament. You're not a Christian if you say that. The Old Testament does matter. Jesus is in it. Moses is in it. The Ten Commandments are in it. It matters, okay? So, it shall be every great matter they shall bring to thee, uh, but every small matter they shall judge. So be easier for thyself, and it shall uh, bear the burden of these, okay? The same in the New Testament. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost, Christians, and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. So, Old Testament and New Testament come together to show a Christian government. Now, there was a Muslim debate, Muslim-Christian debate, and the guy said, there's no rules in the Bible for a government. Really? Did you read the Bible at all? And that's what partly made me do this sermon. Okay, so let's go to uh, the next one. So when it says, submit yourself to every ordinance of man, obey every law and tradition of that place, okay? For the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well, Honour all men. Morning, sister. <laughs> okay. Honour all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honour the king. Does that mean honour a bad king? It can't, can it? It can't. When wisdom, we have to be wise sometimes because a lot of people will just teach you, try and make you obey, obey, obey. We have to think for ourselves, and that's what the Bible's about. Let's go to the next one. Now, somebody came in, do you remember when Mark was a pastor? Somebody came in, his father, and he said, have you ever actually prayed for your pastor? And I sat there, I was going to that church for years and years, and I sat there to my shame thinking, I never did. <laughs> never, not once did I ever pray for Mark. And I'm seeing here, this guy's praying over me every week, you know. So, yes, what we do, turn that off if it's going to bother me. I don't want anything interrupting the word. Thanks. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness. So I will pray for a king who's godly so that I can live a godly life. Anything that makes me live a godly and honest life. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, let every soul be subject to the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. I need to say that again. There is no power but that of God. Nothing matters except Christian law, not to us. Only the rules of God apply, okay? And powers that are ordained of God. Render therefore their due. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Now, is tribute due because your pastor says so? Because your government says No. Tribute is due because that's, if it's trustworthy and honest, then it is. But if you don't pay a fine that you weren't supposed to pay, it was an unjust thing, take it, fight it, win it for other people, okay? Uh, fear to whom fear, honour to whom honour. Now, I'm not going to honour a policeman or a president who's dishonest, because honour is not due to him. I won't even call him president. Bob, I'll call him, or whatever his name is. His honour is not due him, not by us. Okay, let's go to the next one. Now, the apostles are lawbreakers. What, Mario? How dare you say that? The apostles were perfect. Well, they weren't perfect, but they were very, very godly people. And they were in the right. So the apostles are about to break the law. And we're going to use that as an example today. So, by the hands of all the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord at Solomon's porch. Believers were the more added to the Lord. 
multitudes, both of men and women, people converting to Christianity all the time because of the apostles. In so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets. This is how much faith these people had. The apostles are coming. Let's bring the sick people out. And they laid on them beds and couches as, a, as the um, at the least the shadow of Peter passing might out overshadow some of them. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Then the high priest rose up and all that were with him. This is a sect of the Sadducees and were filled with indignation. <laughs> They're very unhappy that the apostles are healing people. I don't know how a good person can be unhappy with that. But they are the law. They are the officers appointed. They are the judges. The apostles are breaking the law at that land at that time. And they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. I'm imagining there's an uncommon prison for worse people. Or a higher up prison for Jewish people. One of the two. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth. And said, go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Okay. Let's go to the next one. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and the council together, and all the senate and the children of Israel. So, the high priest came, and they that were with him. So we've got officers here, we've got the council here, we've got the important people, we've got the law here. Okay. And, uh, okay, but when the officers came, they found them not in the prison. They returned and told, okay, saying, the prison truly we found shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors. The guards are outside, okay, uh, they're gone from the prison, okay, they're shut with safety, they're locked, the doors are locked. Okay, the guards are there, but when we opened, we found no man within. So what had happened? The angel had walked them past the guards, opened the doors somehow and got them out, and everything was still locked. No one can figure out. So they've seen a miracle. Now, these Sadducees at this point are very unnerved. Let's go to the next one. And when the high priest and the captain of the temple... Okay, so we've got the police captain here, okay, the captain of the temple. So we can imagine the chief of police is coming down now, all right? And the chief priest said this is, and they doubted of them where, uh, where unto this would grow. What's going to come from this? We hope nobody finds out about these <laughs> lost apostles that we put in prison. We look like, you know, we look pretty bad here, boss, you know? What are we going to do? Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men who you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. <laughs> Does it sound like the apostles were phased or worried? They were breaking the law. Okay, I'm telling you this for a reason. You see where I'm going. Okay, then went the captain with the officers. Okay, so this is the captain. I'm going, this situation's going to get very out of control. The police captain has to come. And brought them without violence. I'm imagining a lot of times they brought people with violence, so they had to say this. You know, uh, these people must have been, you know, not scared to use their spears and stuff. Okay. For they feared the people, lest they should, should have been stoned. Now, if they're afraid of the people, what do the people actually want? They want to be taught this stuff, right? The people, rather than go to Solomon's temple, which is grand and fantabulous and amazing in the middle of, you know, instead of there in Jerusalem, they would leave there 
to go and sit out with no food and water and listen to Jesus. They would rather do all that. But Jesus didn't have the grand temple and the big things and the big plush curtains and the... Okay? Because this is what people actually want. They want the truth. Now, real, we've got real Christians today that will go to a righteous church. But in those days, but we've also got people that call themselves Christians that will go to a church just because it's big with big bands and big this and big that. That's not the reason to go to a church. You go there for the truth like real Christians did. Okay, let's go to the next one. And when they brought them before the council and the high priest, so this is, you know, this important stuff, okay? Aren't you impressed by us? Say, did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in his name, in this name? They can't say Jesus, okay? So he has to say this name. And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. Well done. Well done, apostles. <laughs> You filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, okay? And the temple we're talking about is going to be destroyed in 33 years from then, okay? Was it 70 what? 73 AD. 73 AD. So we're talking 40 years now. So 40 years from this point, it's going to be destroyed, okay? Behold, you filled it. And intend to bring this man's blood upon us. It's not our fault Jesus died. Well, yes it is. You thought by getting the Romans to kill him that people wouldn't know it was you. Do you think there's any evil that people can do that won't come out in the end? Everything will be exposed. That's the way it is. People might think they're clever, but they're not more clever than God. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is what he says. Okay. We don't follow your government, we follow the Christian government. Basically by saying this. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. I don't care what rules you guys make up, you're not from God. And I'm going to obey God instead of your rules. He doesn't recognise their authority, nor should he. Let's go to the next one. Remember what he said, okay? We don't want to, you know, we didn't kill Jesus. You're going to have his blood on us. No. And he gives it to him straight. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Now remember these words, they slew him and then hanged him on a tree. Jesus was dying a mortal wound because they couldn't take any more beatings. Then they crucified him. Okay, it's in the Bible a few times. We are his witnesses. Who are you guys? His witnesses. <laughs> okay. We are the witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost. Whom God has given to them that obey him. Meaning you don't obey him so you don't know what's going on. Okay, we're witnesses. We saw these things. So he's not scared of saying the truth. He's not scared of saying the thing in front of the high priest or the court. He doesn't care. This needs to be heard. And if we witness something that like we know about Christianity, it's our job to get out there and preach that word and do those things. Okay? What happens? It's not always going to be pleasant. It's not always going to be easy. But this is what's going to happen. Let's go to the next one. Okay? Okay. So one of the guys has told them to let him go. This very famous uh, Sadducee, whatever he was, told them to let him go uh, in case they're right. <laughs> okay? And to him they agreed when they had called the apostles and beaten them. They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Now is this a command that people should follow? No. They departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. They weren't upset at the suffering they had to go through for Jesus. They were happy about it. They rejoiced. I'm a real Christian. <laughs> I suffered for Jesus. 
And that's the attitude that we should have, because sometimes we're going to have a lot of pressure in our personal lives, uh, our work lives. We're going to have lots of pressure in our family lives, our friends, our stuff like this. Many times people are going to try and keep you quiet, like they try to keep the apostles quiet. Don't be quiet. Let's go to the next one. Okay, and we're at the end now. The very last thing of that passage is this. Daily in the temple, in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Okay, the truth has to get out there and it has to come out of us. It's our job. If sometimes things are unpleasant or people make our lives miserable, okay, trust me, the joys that go with it when you convert one person is amazing. You will find God in the most strangest places. I was working, I remember back in England, I was working for some very questionable people. <laughs> and they knew about God. I met people that were brimming with violence, had done awful things, were very, very, you know, super tough guys and actual real ones and stuff like this. And they knew about God. One guy said, oh, I could talk to you all day about God. I was thinking, you? <laughs> Big, huge, muscles on muscles. People that made me look small. There's actually people that make me look small. I work with them. Okay? Huge, giant people with muscles on their muscles, on their muscles. That you think, you can't put muscles there. They got them there. They love God. Now, every house... Okay, every house. Morning, my sister. <laughs> okay, so what do we have here? We have the chance. Now, how do people silence you? Let me tell you how they're going to silence you. You're going to speak about something. They'll say to you, right, straight away, I'm going to give you examples of how they're going to do it. Did you study that in college? Because they did. Yes, I did study it in college. But my friend is higher qualified than you and he says and he says this this and this to silence you they call it the appeal to authority okay an important person says it so you have to believe it but don't fall for that trick that doesn't that's not going to keep me silent of all the people jesus didn't go into the universities and academies to pick apostles he picked real people who went and had the Holy Spirit inside them and began teaching and preaching. Because that is the material that God makes people from. Real apostles, real followers. Don't let people silence you because... Have you ever had someone talk over you? You try and talk and they just talk louder. And they interrupt you, interrupt you, interrupt you. They won't let you finish. Finish what you was going to say. Make sure that these people know the truth. If it, if it makes you in an uncomfortable situation, Jesus went to a Pharisee's house and hit that guy spoke out. Even though Jesus was in his house, he put the guy down. It doesn't matter if you're someone's house. Speak the truth. If you're not welcome in that house anymore, no problem. That's not a house I want to go to anyway. <laughs> okay so it doesn't matter speak so for the voices that are trying to silence us around the world they're doing awful things to christians to try and keep them quiet around the world and they're bringing out laws you know that same sex type of law you, you've heard those ones that have come out but it's a european imperative then we'll leave europe and we'll make a christian place Okay, we need to, to put God first, okay, T to make sure God is more important than people's laws. Did you have a question? No, you're okay. Okay, we're going to pray now.